and um, <clears throat> first thing you need to do is to take out all the screws that are around the holding the back plastic cover of the television um, a small electronic screwdriver is handy for this but um, they're usually a, a Phillips head type of screw um, I find it handy to leave the screws in the cover for, makes it easier for finding the screws when you're reassembling it there are a few screws in the middle of the television some of these need to come out, some of them didn't but I took them all out but it, it does no harm um, some, sometimes you'll find some of the connections like the SCART connections may have screws in them um, you need to check these if you find when you go to lift the cover it'll lift in areas where you have all the screws off you, you'll be able to apply a bit of pressure and find where um, the cover is still connected to the television that way you'll know where you, you need to take out more screws. Once the cover is off, you'll see, um, you don't actually see the real board yet. You have to take off that heat shield. There's your model numbers and your serial numbers. If you need to get information for parts or more videos about your particular model, there you are. For for this though there's a heat shield there that big chunk of metal that's there that needs to come off be very careful there's capacitors all around there deadly dangerous if there's power in them they can really hurt you or kill you so please um, use extreme caution even if it's unplugged never work on anything that isn't unplugged from the mains completely uh, you need to you need to disconnect all that metal, all the um, screws, take out all the screws they're smaller screws, they're a little bit tougher to get at near the top because they tend to fall into all the cracks so handy to have a little tweezers and a magnetic screwdriver that metal is very sharp um, if people are <coughs> known for PC skills for building PCs, they'll know that some of the metal is just crazy sharp. That way, that kind of metal is very, very dangerous. Just be careful lifting it up. There's a lot of components underneath that board, but there's, there's quite a few um, little screws all the way around it, and that should lift straight up. And um, <coughs> it's very uncomfortable the way I'm doing it there. Sorry, I'm wearing wellies. Uh, um, just came from the garden so I was wearing wellies there and it was very uncomfortable um, I was working on the ground as well um, place something underneath the screen not to scratch it or you could be in big trouble from the wife um, and then you'll be inside the TV and you can see the two boards there covers off uh, the board that you want to be looking at is the board on the left that board there with the capacitors on it that's the one that causes you trouble. Capacitors in the top right are the ones that are swollen for me. There's two of them. Um, you'll see from the photos better. Sorry, I didn't get pictures down low. And uh, there on the photos, you'll see the capacitors in the top right. Just replace them and uh, all was good. Here are some examples of bad capacitors. Swollen capacitors have bulges at their tops, not always very visible. Bulges at their bottoms, they can have leaky fluid coming out of them. Um, if you notice that they'd have to be perfectly flat at the top, if they're not perfectly flat, if they're cracked, if they don't look right, they're no good. Replace them. Uh, sometimes they can lose some brown material out of them, electrolyte, and um, just get rid of them. It's not difficult to replace the capacitors. A little practice on an old motherboard with a solder and iron and uh, a few capacitors and uh, you'll be away with it. Just use caution and do your research before you attempt to repair. Good luck. If this video has been of any use to anybody, please give it a thumbs up.